Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, they claim their mom is a pill-popping alcoholic. Mom, 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 mom. You would, yes. Who's out of control. My mom pulled out a loaded gun and ended up pointing it at me. She pretends to not even have a clue why you're here. Apparently I'm doing pills and drinking and all that. Why can't you just admit that you are. Here's what they're complaining about. You mow the yard while you're foaming at the mouth. You strip naked at a seventh birthday party. You abandon them at three years of age. You told these people I, would, cannot, I was passed no. out on the floor you at my husband's funeral. Accept. Well, here's the picture. I'm not in denial. Yes, just... you are. This is disgusting to me. I have to live with you. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. Well, siblings, Crystal, Kayla, and Patrick all say their mother, Sherry, is straight up out of control. She's blown through an inheritance worth over a quarter of a million dollars in the past 11 months, buying multiple motorcycles and running up $500 bar tabs with her friends. But that's not all. They claim Sherry is popping non-prescribed pills and washing them down with rum after work leaving her sloppy and sometimes violent. Take a look. Mama. Mom, mom, mom. My mom is an alcoholic and a drug addict, and she is completely out of control. I don't oh. take Xanax. Drug test me. I don't take Xanax. Okay. I don't take Xanax. I don't take hydrocodone. When my stepfather passed away, he left her $239,000. She blew through that within 11 months. It was disgusting. She would spend hundreds of dollars on stupid stuff. She got a brand new Mustang. She had wrecked it, bought two Harleys that she didn't even know how to ride. She would go on clothing sprees, buying brand and new really expensive pairs of boots. She would go purchase a large amount of jewelry. My mom spent a lot of money on strangers. She would buy random guys alcohol at the liquor store. She would take people on the casino trip. She would pay for everybody. She would take us out to restaurants and it had to be steak and it had to be lobster. One night we went out to a restaurant and my mom was just buying shots after shots after shots to the point where the bill was at $557. My mother is broke. She drives drunk and then she comes home and she brags about how the cop just let her go. You were highly f***ed up wanting to take my daughter out and uh, about. Excuse me? I didn't have a vehicle. She's loud, obnoxious, screaming. The dog's got to go. Come get her this weekend, Patrick, or I'm going to put her in the down. She wants to fight. She just has this look on her face like she's ready to f*** someone up. One night, she was severely intoxicated. We go through the drive through we get home, and she started nagging me. Next thing I know, all this food's being knocked out of my hand, and then she flipped over the table, and then everything was a mess. Whether it's pills, whether it's alcohol, you choose to take the easy way out. My mom loves her pills more than she loves us kids, I believe. I'm completely annoyed. I'm tired of waking up every day worrying about my mom. I hope Dr. Phil tells my mom to grow up. Well, Kayla says her breaking point was when her mother actually brandished a loaded gun during an argument on Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. This past Christmas Eve, my mom literally pulled out a loaded gun and ended up pointing it at me. It all started when I was asking her where the Christmas shopping was. She got pissed off. As I was turning to walk away towards my room, there was a chair being thrown at me. I was completely shocked. Then there was a picture being thrown at me. She just kept provoking me and provoking me and provoking me. I was at my wit's end. I was so tired of this fighting constantly. I snapped. She gets on all fours, slaps my knee to the side, bends down, reaches underneath the couch, pulls out the gun. I go to stand up. She backs up into the archway, puts the gun up to her head, cocks it back, and then she puts it back up, and then she pointed at me. I'm literally on video chat watching all of this go on. I didn't know what was going to happen next. I didn't fear for myself. I feared for her. Honestly, what was going through my mind was, this is it. This is the way that I see her passing away. After she pointed the gun at herself and pointed it at me, she just threw the gun. 
and then it hit the wall. I was extremely pissed, and I'm still pissed right now. She could have killed my sister. That was ridiculous. I'm sorry for that. I'm not proud of it. I never thought in my wildest imagination my mom would go to that extreme, but she did. Okay, a gun was pulled during an argument. A gun, yes. And you were afraid she was going to kill herself more than you were afraid she was going to kill you. Right. Okay. Now, Crystal, you've not spoken to your mother in three months, right? Christmas Eve was really the last time that I did speak with her, and it was me screaming at the top of my lungs to put the gun down, what are you doing? A lot of people are in denial and they're defensive about things that are being said. She pretends to not even have a clue why you're here. Right. She, it's not that she's denying the allegations. She's denying knowing even what the allegations are. It's like, I, I, have, I have no idea why we're here. I, it's, I, they just wrote in. And so I'm here to figure out what, I don't, I don't get what the problem is. I have no idea why I'm here. She's always in denial. She will never admit to any of the wrongs that she does. Anytime I see my mom in her non-sober state of mind, I always tell her exactly how I feel. So it's a shocker to me to know or to hear her say she doesn't know why she's here. Oh, yeah. She, in fact, she I made care. a list of her statements. I'll show her when she gets out here. So what is it you think needs to happen with her? Do you think she's... What she says here is that she's grieving. And what you guys are describing, drinking, drugging, gun pulling, raging, driving drunk, that's not grief. That's just her excuse now, because what what was it before? What was it before our stepdad life, passed if away? That's the case. Yeah. You know, it's always something. It's always something. So this didn't start. It only got worse. After my stepdad passed away. Much yeah, worse. Right. In fact, she bailed on y'all when you were very young. Yeah, but she'll deny it. Yeah. And you went how long without seeing her at one point? Um, Nine years? It was from six to eight, eight to 10, 10 to 14, and then 14 to 23. And a lot of this time that she wasn't seeing y'all, she was living across the street. Yeah, just like right up the road. Yeah, I would and, miss the she school wouldn't bus. come, she could walk there. Yeah. Yeah, we would, Kayla would miss the school bus to, or miss the our drop off at our dad's house to go to her mom's house at the next stop. I would ride a different bus just so I could see my mom for like 15 minutes. Uh -huh. I would lie to my dad and uh -huh. miss my school bus so I could see her for 15 minutes. But she made no effort. No. And she denies that. Correct. Okay. Um, she drives drunk now. Oh, yeah. Drunk and on pills. Mm -hmm. Yes. But then she just brags about that. It's not like, oh, I can't believe I did that. She brags about dodging the DUI or talking her way out of it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not just us. I mean, I've heard her say it to multiple. When she came down to Florida, she was telling um, my boyfriend, she was telling the roommate, she was telling everybody. Like, it was, it was funny to her that she got away with it. Right. She says she has no idea why she's here. She has no idea what it is the problems are, what you guys are complaining about, nothing. So you're hoping, because this has been going on not for a year or two or three, this has been going on your whole lives. This right. is a core life. value of hers. What What is it you think is you expect her to do? What is it you want her to change? She needs, she needs to get some serious help, and I'm not saying just for her addiction. I think she has a lot of mental health problems going on. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. Right. I mean, if you don't put it on the list, it doesn't get done. Sherry says that she is sick and tired of just being judged by her children. And if they don't like how she's living, they can just get lost. That's her attitude. That's what she tells us. We're going to meet her after the break and see what she has to say. I'm constantly being accused of drinking all the time. Mama. Mom. 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 
Mom! I didn't believe it when I got the call to be on Dr. Phil. What is it that I'm doing so wrong? And later... When have you ever paid for anything in your life? I've been on my own since I was 15 years old. This is disgusting to me. Tomorrow, Lori Fallow's missing children. Where are your kids? You think this could be money-driven? Absolutely. She hasn't told anybody where the kids are. She was talking about end of days. She said it would be better to put the kids in the car and go off the side of a cliff. So you've got four dead and two missing. It is time for you to end this. Find those kids. That's tomorrow. Then on Friday, a wife who's also an escort. You're OK with her doing what she does? Yeah, we needed her income to pay our bills. You need to stand up for yourself here. New Dr. Phil, Friday. A blown inheritance, a loaded handgun brandished, and then accusations about addiction, alcohol abuse. Mom Sherry says, yep, she spent her inheritance, and yep, she pulled out a gun. But abusing drugs and alcohol, well, that's just all in her past. Take a look. You don't even give a like you don't care. Well, you know what? I'm on the Dr. Phil show. It's OK. So yeah. there you go. I didn't believe it when I got the call to be on Dr. Phil. What is it that I'm doing so wrong? And why is it that you can't come to me and say, hey, mom, look, instead of just browbeating you? You know deep down somewhere that you need some kind of help. All of this came about because I asked my kids for help. Just step up and pay one bill. Mama. Mom. 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 You literally have so much money. You what? I'm constantly being accused of drinking all the time. Ow! And I don't. I can go four to five, six days without drinking, but sometimes if I'm having a bad day or being blamed for stuff, I will sit down and have a cocktail. Didn't I go to Florida to take care of you and you threatened to call the cops? That was over prescription medication. That's that I don't take. They also say that I sit there and take hydrocodone all the time, and I don't. I've had back surgery in the past. I'll take them every now and then if my back is hurting, not to sit there and eat them like they're candy. My husband died December 2018. He did leave me money, and it has just caused the worst problems in the world. I've been accused of taking that and spending it all on me. That's not the case, and they know it. I don't even know who you are. I, can't, I don't even recognize you. Well, that's good, because I don't even know who I am either. One kid's always mad at me, and then the other kid follows. It affects me. My kids constantly call me a piece of Well, if I'm such a piece of then why do you want to be part of it? Well, Sherry, how are you? Good. Um, your children have written in about you, obviously. Then when we talk to you, <laughs> Uh, you seem to be in the dark about what it is they were upset about. That addiction is all in the past, alcohol, abuse, it, everything is, is in the past, that they're just dredging up things that have long since gone by the wayside. True? True. I don't know why they can't come to me and, and you know, and we can fix it. That's the reason I'm, I agreed to be here. I want, I want to get fixed. We always we come do. to you. But at the I time, had to you come to Jesus it. moment with you and I moved back. And you didn't. Now we're here. And the second you know you're wrong, you walk away. And you don't I, hear any more of it. You say that you have back pain? I have, I've lived in patients. I have had back surgery. Sure. And um, so you take prescription medication for that? I used to. I don't take it anymore. OK. So you're not taking opioids No, when you now. can drug test me, no. Um, I took one hydrocodone last week. Where, where'd you get that? I got it from a friend of mine who gets a prescription. Okay. I don't want to go to the doctor. I don't want to let, because I, I don't want a prescription of 30. I don't want a prescription of them. And why? Because I'm, I've been through so much. I don't want to fall back <clears throat> to where I once was. Well, where I did hurt always two kids. falling back. Okay, You're well, always. You know what? Let me tell you something. You walk in my shoes for a minute. Come on now. 
Whatever I say, you're, you're gonna so damn me. repetitive. So. It's the same thing over and over and over. Okay. And you I do. An issue? We may have not walked you ain't in had your an issue? shoes. No, here we but go. But we have we walked this is where in she's some sort now. of path that you have. You know what? We're you good. don't even know how many times she's on video chat, and I'm watching you do what you do. And you're okay. I told you that she said she didn't understand why you guys would have any issues or any problems. She said, I don't know what it is I'm doing wrong this time. I don't know what's going on. I'm only here because I asked my kids to help with bills. I don't know what I'm failing at now. Kids are always mad. I don't know what I did now. I don't know what's going on. Apparently, I'm failing. So I said there's a difference between denying allegations and being clueless about what it is that's the complaint. What you're saying is you don't even know what the complaints are. Apparently, I'm doing pills and drinking and all that. Mom, why can't you just admit that I you admit are? I admit that I did take pills. As soon pills. as you start complaining that your back hurts, we already know you're, on, you're gonna go back binging. You say you don't have any idea what it is they're complaining about. You, you said it here. I just pulled out eight or 10 statements. Okay, here's what it is they're complaining about. I wanted to just put it there on top of what you're saying. Uh, they say that you made drugs, alcohol, and abuse normal growing up, that you gave out prescription drugs as a teen, that you're manipulative, that you're a pathological liar, that as a kid, uh, watching you mow the yard while you're foaming at the mouth, that you strip naked at a concert, uh, at a seventh birthday party, that you blew through an inheritance in 11 months, that you're an alcohol and a drug addict, that you abandoned them at three years of age, that you exposed yourself to their friends at 13 years old, you brag about dodging DUIs, smoked pot with them as a teen, passed out drunk, high on the floor at your stepfather's funeral. Passed I mean, I could just go on. I mean, we only had funeral. so much room, but I just thought, you're saying you don't know what it is they're complaining about. I just thought I would list them for you. You do that right there. You shake your head, you blow it you off just said because you you're mad. You told mad the people I would pass no. out on the floor you at my husband's funeral. You cannot accept the truth. You get defensive oh. because you don't know the what funeral. you look like. It was after the funeral when you got into the fireball. Here's the picture. This is right after there. your husband's funeral. See? You make that little smirking face. This is what makes me feel like nothing's gonna help you. You're in denial. You won't accept anything. No, I'm not in denial. Yes, just... you are. Yes, you are. You this don't is accept hurtful it. And it's embarrassing. I've had to deal with this for years. I want to be 25 and I want to live my life like everybody else gets to. I'm tired. Well, Sherry says that her kids have some nerve keeping tabs on her money especially Kayla, who Sherry says is freeloading in her home as we speak. Oh. We'll talk about that after the break. <laughs> Since Kayla moved in and lived with me, it's a fight. It's falling on me to pay all of the bills. Now she wants me to start paying rent to live there. My kid needs to understand life is not free. It comes with a price tag. And later... Okay. Stop getting Did you not Stop trying to throw stuff back at me. This is about you and making sure I don't have to walk in one day and find you on the floor, dead. I don't believe my mother. My mother really, really wants to work. My mom is constantly quitting her jobs. She cannot make commitment just like she couldn't make commitment to us kids. One time when she was trying to apply for a job, she went to the extent of buying fake urine just to pass the drug test. My mom needs to stop the dumb She needs to let go of the drugs. She needs to let go of the alcohol. We want to help her, but if she doesn't get the help, we're done. Kayla, you wanted to respond to what your mother said. Freeloading? Uh, when have you ever paid for anything in your life? I've been on my own since I was 15 years old. 15. I've been doing this for a long time. This is disgusting to me. And you love us, kids? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? You have never been there for me. 
I was there for you. I went down to Florida to get you because you were staying in your van after I gave you money to get a place. Did I not? Not once, but twice. That's right. You did. You did. Okay. And then you were still in that van, and me and Patrick went down there, and we got you and brought you back, got you out of harm's way. I'm not the perfect mother. Okay. I've made mistakes. Okay, you, you say this like, okay, fine. No, it's what, I just what do you, out what, do you, what does that mean? What does it mean, okay, fine? That is dismissive, it's condescending, and it is really hurtful to them when you just give them the back of your hand. Did you or did you not, just within the last few months, pull a gun on her? I didn't pull a gun on her. <clears throat> Was there a gun pulled during a conversation? I pulled it on, I what the pulled hell's on. going on when you're pulling a gun? Don't tell me this is all in the past when just last Christmas Eve, a gun is pulled during an argument. Oh, she says me. you're I drinking got... a liter of alcohol every three days, that you're, that you're doing hydrocodone and Xanax. When was the last time I took a Xanax? It doesn't should I be know. able to answer? Like, I, should, I, I should know, know because those we questions. don't know what you're taking when you're taking pills. Uh, we don't know. Do a hair follicle for Xanax. Uh, I have not so taken a Xanax in a while. You're so defensive about it. Because I'm not doing it. And you don't take Xanax? No, I don't. Not anymore. Not now, right? Here we go. This is called deflection. You start talking about the drugs that she's doing. She accuses you of doing drugs. You start defending yourself. Now she's got you talking about you instead of her. Bottom line is I, I want the help. With what? Everything. No, that yeah. doesn't work the for me. The addiction on alcohol, the addiction on pills. I thought you weren't taking pills. I'm not, but if they So if don't condescend to me. I'm not What do you mean you want that. help on everything? You're not taking I pills, but you want help with back. pills? No. I want my relationship back with my kids. You're a phlebotomist, right? Yep. Did you have to get some clean urine in order to qualify? Uh, no. Didn't you purchase urine? Yeah, but I didn't use it. You can't use it because it's temperature. It's, it's, you have to have a temperature on it. People do it all the time. But you bought it. Yeah, you did. Which means you needed it. Yeah, because of the marijuana. Video that everybody When Patrick hears. was living with his mother last year, he videotaped her behavior. This is when she said she was tired. Mother, hello. Hey, Welcome Lord. back to the reality, you know? You literally had so much money. You what? You've had so much money. Sherry. 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 Hey. Ow. <laughs> Do you have no idea why we're here? I know why we're here. Well, Sherry admits she abused pills while her children are growing up, but is adamant that pills didn't keep her from her motherly duties. Well, her children disagree, and they say it's something that started then and continues through today. We'll hear what she has to say about that after the break. Growing up, my mother was negligent. My mom would leave hydrocodone and a bowl of weed for us whenever she would go out. My mom was convulsing and had a little foam coming from her mouth, and I just started pushing on her stomach as hard as I could. She was a terrible mother. Well, Sherry insists that her past use of pills and alcohol never kept her from being a good mother. Now, Crystal says, uh, that's just not true. That Sherry dumped her on her father's doorstep at just three years old and disappeared for years at a time. You left us. Let me tell you a secret, sister. I remember that completely. You were three. You don't Stop remember it. it. Growing up, my mother was negligent. She was a terrible mother. You dropped us off when we were three. No, I did not. 
I lived with my mom until I was three years old. At the time, we were living in a car. And one day, she dropped us off at my dad's house. And I never lived with my mom again. My mom never fought for custody. She just gave up on us. I never ever walked away from my children. I never had the money to fight for custody for my kids. Because of circumstances out of my control, I lost custody. They don't know the truth. You can check it out yourself. Throughout my childhood, I would see my mom sporadically. My mom was supposed to have us every other weekend. But it was whenever she wanted to see us. At one point, it was nine years that I did not see my mother. My mom would miss my honor rolls, my high school graduation, the majority of my birthdays. I did miss a lot of Crystal's life, but when I did see her, I did make it special. I wanted to let her and know that I may not have been there then, but I'm here now. One time, I actually wrote myself a birthday card from my mom because I hadn't heard from her. Since when was I your daughter? You've never treated me like your daughter. Never. I never wanted my life to be without my children. I never wanted them to be away from me. There's nothing I can do to take back that time. Well, Kayla and her brother Patrick had a different father and home than their sister Crystal, but have very similar stories to tell. You choose to take the easy way out. You can't admit to anything. When I was 12 and my little brother was 11, my father kicked my mother out of the house, and she moved us right up the road. My mother did not have the means to provide for us. I lied, and I manipulated to go see her, no matter where she was. When I was 15, I did move in with my mom. Shortly after that, she was exposing me to things that I should not have been exposed to. My mom would leave alprazolam, somas, hydrocodone, and a bowl of weed for us whenever she would go out. When I was 10 years old, I saw my mom on the couch roll onto the floor. I was very scared because she was convulsing and had a little foam coming from her mouth. I was very scared. I didn't know if she was going to die right there in front of me. She was laying on her back, and I just started pushing on her stomach as hard as I could about four or five times, and then she ended up vomiting. A 10-year-old should never have to resuscitate their mother. I am tired of watching my mom destroy her life and kill herself. I need my mom to take responsibility for her actions so I can move on with my life. So you're saying when she would go out, there was a chemical babysitter? She would leave drugs? Yeah. How old were you? I was like 14, 15. You don't remember that? You go to the That's BMW? when the doctor had me on. Exactly. So don't look at me like me that, that when you know it's true. The whole thing is, is you, you were know with these Ian things are true. Were, okay. Stop getting Did defensive. You not Stop trying to throw stuff back at me. Just take it, own it, and move on with your life. Stop living like you have to point the finger at me, too. I know what I do wrong. I know what I do wrong. But this isn't about me. This is about you and making sure I don't have to walk in one day and find you on the floor dead. Did you leave drugs for her? when she was 14, 15 years old? Not that I remember. Honestly, I don't remember that. You I remember she was dating a guy that was about on the about the doctor. Pill. Like, come on yeah, now. Yeah, but, OK, and did Literally, you, did it's you... like 10 second Tom right here. Like, come on. You have no recollection of that? I don't remember. Are you driving drunk now? No. You just did. When? Whenever you got pulled over. The night you hit the trash can at the VFW. Do you disagree with anything at this point? No. We'll be right back. My mother loves playing the victim. They don't understand what it is that I've been through. You don't understand what you put us through. Kayla and her sister Crystal uh, say their mother would rather play the victim than apologize for all the trauma and heartache that she has caused them. No, I want to apologize. Now, Sherry says her children just don't seem to care about the toll that her past has taken on her. My mother loves playing the victim. All I'm trying to do is get over my husband, right. get over my brother. You're never going to get over it. You just have to cope with it and move on. My husband died December 7, 2018. My husband was my everything. He was my soulmate, my best friend. And when I lost him, I lost me too. 
My kids constantly tell me that I can only grieve for them for so long if they don't have the right to tell me when I can and cannot grieve for my husband. They don't understand what it is that I've been through. You don't understand what you put us through. My mom thinks that nobody has lived a hard life as tough as she has, and that's her excuse for her addiction and her problems. It's a blame game with her. My sister is falling apart because all she does is sit here and worry about you. My mom needs to let go of the past. My mother has exhausted any sympathy I have. My mom needs to live in the present and realize the life that she has now. I, I can tell you this from personal experience. I can just take off the Dr. Phil hat for a minute and just be Phil here. Because uh, I was raised by an alcoholic father. I as far back as I can remember, uh, he was drunk. There was violence in the home, just, I mean, I, I can't think of a time as far back as I can remember that was ever peaceful. So I know what it's like to grow up with that. Then you get to be an adult and you have to make a decision. You're either gonna live in that image or you're gonna go a different route and you guys are adults now, and you're gonna have to make a choice just like I did. You're either gonna have to say, okay, I'm gonna be scarred by that, or I'm gonna mimic that, or I'm gonna choose differently. And sometimes you have to give yourself what you wish you could get from somebody else. Sometimes you wish you had a mother that was there that says, you know, I'm, I'm here every day when you're three, four, five, and six telling you how special you are as young women, how special you are as a young man, how great you're gonna be when you grow up, but they're not there. You may never get that from her. You know, she may spend the rest of her life being a victim and saying, well, you know, I just, I've, I've had these losses and I had this pain when I was younger and so I'm self-medicating my way to oblivion through the rest of my life and I've left bodies scattered along the way, casualties along the trail. There's power in forgiveness. I forgive. And you have to decide two things. One, can you forgive her for what she's done? And two, can you forgive yourself for the time you've wasted in being invested in all of that? I think one reason why I try, because I've always taught my kids, my relationship with someone is not yours. If you want, if there's some sort of a relationship that my mom can build with my children, I'm going to allow it, but to a point. If she starts with the tox toxicity, I'm gonna cut it off. She abandoned you as you were growing up, and she is abandoning you right here on this stage right now by invalidating your concerns. <laughs> we'll be right back. I've been speaking with siblings uh, Crystal, Kayla, and Patrick who are worried that their mother Sherry is on self-destruct. Um, she clearly is. Um, you know, what I'm, what I'm telling your children is, you know, life goes on regardless of what you do or don't do. I want to be the mom for my kids the way up. I, I want to, I want to fix it. Yeah. I don't want to hurt anymore. I just, I'm, I torment my, I do it to myself and I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for it all. I want to fix it. I don't, I don't like to drink. It's just my way of escaping out of it, not having to deal with it. What, what is it you're escaping? Just the, the alone, the loss of my husband, the loss of my kids. The truth. The truth. And the truth is what? That I do have problems. And what are they? I do take pills from time to time. I do drink. Why? Because I'm hurting inside and... From what? Just everything. Being a failure. Not just, just 
being a failure. Not being able to cope with, or the right coping skills, shall I say, to deal with the things that I've had. I just, I've just got, I just numb myself. I came to get the help. Did you really? Yeah. Because you spent the entire time trying to deny, deflect, point fingers, and then vacillate back to, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever, sure, yeah, I'm a drunk, I'm a druggie, I'm a whatever. Look, if, if, if you think you're telling me what I want to hear, you, you got the wrong guy. Do you I think you're that. doing me some favor by no. telling me what I, I want to hear? No. <laughs> you got the wrong bald guy. <laughs> because you're doing me no favor. You do what you want to do. Right. She's going to do whatever she's going to do. Not, on, not even God can change what has happened. That is what it is. The question is, what are you going to do about it? She wasn't there. She may have dumped you at three years old. She may have pulled her pants down in front of your friends at 13 years old partying and drunk. She may have done all of these things. You can't change that. Just call that colorful. <laughs> Whatever you want to, however you want to paint that, it is what it is. You are here now, and you have to choose. You know, it can bend you but not break you. You can decide you are who you are. That's your choice. You write on the slate of who you are. Well, I'm really on the fence about what to do with her. I, I asked Paul Moen to come here. He's the chief executive officer of Ocean Recovery, which is a treatment center just located steps away from the water in Newport Beach, California. Ocean Recovery is a really comprehensive, long-term, gender-specific program that treats substance abuse. And more importantly, it deals with co-occurring disorders and behavior disorders at the same time because there are psychological issues going on with your mother that you can put her in a straight up rehab facility and she can get dried out, she can get sober, but if she doesn't deal with the psychological issues that are going on, those things will trigger her self-medicating again with drugs or alcohol. And Paul, were she motivated, she would be the ideal candidate for your program, correct? Absolutely. I mean, this is a great example of how addiction will just tear holes through families. It's obviously you guys love each other, but like Dr. Phil was saying, it's time for you to draw a line in the sand. And your mental health issues and your addiction, Sherry, untreated, it will destroy your family. And we would love to help you if you really want it. I will. But for me to make this offer, you've got to make a decision that you're, you're going to run and broad jump into this program. You're going to lean into this program. You're going to be a star in this program. It would be really great to get that all, everything gone, because it has hindered me. It's never going to be gone. You just have to accept it and move on. That's it. Well, I'm looking you in the eye, and I believe you. And the family is involved in this as it unfolds and goes along. So you guys will have an opportunity to be involved in this as it, as it moves forward. Deal? Deal. OK. OK, I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Paul. Thank you so much, and to Ocean Recovery. Uh, we're all providing the resources for Sherry. For more information about today's show, you can log on to drphil.com. I pay a lot of attention to what you guys say on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. On Facebook recently, Bethany Turner asked me a question. She said, what is your sleeping schedule like? <laughs> Why would you care? <laughs> um, Actually, I'm kind of a vampire. I'll sleep for two or three hours and then get up and like do some emails and go back to sleep for a couple hours and get up and do some others, which I do not recommend <laughs> at all. That is not a healthy way to sleep. There are reasons I do that, that I've spent a lot of time 
playing football in grade school, junior high, high school, college, and racing motocross. So my back and knees, uh, I've paid the price. Let's just put it that way. It's hard to stay in one place for very long. But you ask, so there's your answer. We'll see you next time.